All right, now I know what you're thinking. Trust me, I would rather do Landell right now too, but we can't keep putting off Dragon Barrow. So, let's go to Bestial Sanctum, and we'll knock this out, and we can finally move on in the next episode. There's not too much here. We've already done like, I don't want to say half. That's a bit much, but we've done some of it. Uh, and waiting until after Landell is just too much. I, I don't know when it makes sense to really do this place. It just never feels like the next place you're supposed to go. It's always like too hard. And then once it's not too hard around like, I don't know what level are we like? I don't know. Maybe around 80 to 90, I guess. Probably be when this place feels like it's more doable. You just got so many other options that the game is actually encouraging you to go do like Deep Root Depths, Mount Galmir, Volcano Manor, all those like Ronnie, Lake of Rot type areas. And of course, Landell, but we're here now, so we're going to make this work. So we're going to start with the Black Blade Kindred here outside. And uh, I'm also just going to come right out and say that if you're on this video for just a standalone Dragon Barrow guide, this would probably be kind of an absolute mess because we've been in and out of Dragon Barrow throughout this guide, grabbing random things. So this episode will not be a complete Dragon Barrow guide, but... I think we're going to do enough of it that hopefully it'll be pretty obvious what parts you've missed. And of course, if you watch the whole walkthrough, you'd be fine too. So, um, with that out of the way, this is a Black Plague Kindred. Essentially a Valiant Gargoyle on steroids, but luckily with pretty much the same moveset. Lucky in that you will have seen most of these attacks before, not lucky because it's fun to fight. The main difference, other than the extra health and damage and black paint job, come with its health drain effect. Every attack that has a red glow, if it hits you, will have pretty much the same effect as getting hit by the death magic that the black knife assassins use, where your health will drain rapidly for a second or two after you get hit. And there are two of these guys in the game, and I'm going to say this about both of them. The fight is very difficult. And all you're killing it for are its weapons. So if you don't want to deal with it or just feel like coming back later, absolutely feel free to do so. They do give you a nice amount of runes too, I suppose. But um, cheesing it with traditional status effects, unfortunately not really an option as it is immune to all status effects. The only type of attack that's really going to do any noticeable amount of extra damage is strike, aka blunt weapons, because it's basically made of stone. And... Uh, while you can't cheese it by proccing a status effect and running away, you can still run away from this one, luckily, since it's right outside Bestial Sanctum. You can go outside, hit it with whatever your biggest attack is, and then run back inside to reset it by hiding in, like, one of these alcoves in the wall. Um, you should be able to just barely see it through the door, or more easily, I guess, if it roared and, and broke some of these pillars inside, which it can do. And it will slowly back away and go back to the stairs, but if you wait long enough, it'll fully reset and have its back to you again like this, except it won't regenerate any health. Obviously, resting will reset its health bar, but if you need some room to breathe or heal or whatever, you can retreat inside. If it does still have line of sight on you, it can hit you with a long range roar that can reach you absolutely no problem. It easily hits Garonk from the front door if he's in its path. And that method is going to take a very long time since it takes a bit for him to reset. But again, if you're really struggling, it is an option. Um, but let's see what else. If you have some ranged attacks, there's also a more aggressive version of that, which revolves around the fact that he has a pretty hard time reaching you with most of his attacks if he's on the ground down there and you're up on these ledges on the sides of the stairs or if he's down there as well. I want to be very clear that he can still hit you if you're up here. And he can still get up here, but it's not like he can just walk in a straight line to get here. It takes a little more time. So you have some more freedom than you would fighting him out in the open where he can reach you easily. If you're all 100% melee, I'm sorry. I'm just very sorry. We will get through this together. So, same rules applies when it, uh, or is when we fought the gargoyles before. Try to go with a little bit of aggression. I really did not expect him to just jump up there immediately, I'm not gonna lie. Aggression, jumping attacks, charge attacks, when you can land them, are gonna be great, because we can stagger him and get a crit, which will be super nice considering 
he has a whole lot of health. Switch to the halberd. It's raining, so my lightning actually does to like five or ten percent more damage, I think. It's not a lot, but anything helps right now. I have to not die though, because if I die the weather will probably change. Okay, this giant tornado also has a health drain effect because it's glowing red. Going back to the sword. Very unfortunate. I prefer the halberd. There's Rick again just to be safe. Holy shit. Stagger would be so cool right now. Have to be getting close. play this extremely safe and get the bubble on. I don't have the bubble anymore. Well, that sucks. <laughs> he just tripped. I have no idea what is in this flask I just drank. No! Yeah, that guy's an asshole. Just no... No sugar coating it. You get the Gargoyle's Black Blade, and the Gargoyle's Black Halberd. Fighting you on the hill sucks too. Staircase, literally... Everything about this sucks. But... We go inside, we take his runes, and... We level up. I usually stop my characters at like 40 vigor, but I just need the extra cushion to be able to talk about stuff while I'm fighting them. It's not as easy as I make it look. I understand I'm one of the greatest to ever do it, but even I have my limits. But outside Bestial Sanctum, you turn right around the corner. Go out here. Make sure you spend those runes because we're about to do some, um, some platforming. And we can get stuck, or your runes rather, can get stuck like halfway down here if you die. Well, let's be honest, when you die, because this is from soft platforming we're talking about. So, don't want to have a bunch of runes saved up. Drop down onto this branch. And then the next branch. And then... Make sure you land on this dome, not the little bridge thing sticking out of it, because that fall will kill you. This one doesn't. And then down on this roof. Now from here, you can go onto really any of these platforms. You're going to jump to it, and then drop down carefully onto the next ledge. Take a little bit of damage from that, but it's fine. And then we go across, and then down, and we heal up. There'll be a couple bats here. Okay. 
And there's something stupid on this level. I can't remember what it is. Here we go. Soft cotton. And then again, pick any pillar you would like. And just look for ledges to slow down your descent. And then whenever you feel safe, drop all the way down. Down here at the end, sort of, we got the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman. And then go back this way. To this platform. And we get the, uh... I don't know... How to say that, really. That's okay. It's a dagger. And then warp to Ferrum Bridge nearby. Ferrum Great Bridge. And the only thing unique about this fight is honestly that it is on a bridge. Aside from that, Strag is not going to do anything you haven't seen before. This fight is like kind of infamously difficult, I think, because a lot of people try to do it early. And that's kind of understandable because you get 80,000 runes for killing it. And unlike the Black Blade Kindred we just fought, this fight actually is very simple to cheese. Since we're doing it at a pretty appropriate level for Dragon Barrow, I think it's totally manageable to just fight normally. But if you do want to cheese it, you can proc both Poison and Scarlet Rod on it, and pretty much just run to the end of the bridge and let those run their course, rinse and repeat, until it dies. The same tactics you would use to kill it early will still work. You can use Poison Mist with only 12 Faith and or take a uh, Dragon Heart to the Church of Dragon Communion here in Caled, or Cathedral rather, to get Rotten Breath, which only takes 15 Faith and 12 Arcane, both pretty low requirements, um, and aside from that, you know, darts, arrows, whatever else, Proxo status effects, so, let's get to it. the wrong way. Oh, Torn's dead. No good. How did that not hit me? Luckiest man alive. do it. I hit the button to hop off the torrent there and just, I just didn't do it. I was supposed to look a lot cooler. I was going to jump off and hit him in the head, but oh well. So you get a dragon heart for that. Um, and then after it's dead, or I guess you could do this while you're waiting for its status effects to kill it. Go down here to the south end of the bridge and drop off this cliff to the right. Should find a teardrop scarab. Put the best seal constitution incantation. And then for this next part, we're going to do another one of those putrid avatars, which are the 
minor or tree avatars that have the scarlet rot so if you need to go throw on some flame uh cleanse me or boluses or just heal up or whatever you can go back to that race at the beginning of the bridge and then just come down here or go from the rise to whatever works now if you want you can actually lure this boss up to this lightning area here and the lightning can hurt it but it hurts you too so i don't know how helpful that is but i just thought that was like kind of a cool detail Exact same as the other one we fought here in Caleb, though. And those, um... Scarlet Rot effects are basically just gonna make a wave in front of him. So if you can get behind him or to the side, you're pretty much good. Down he goes. You get to fire as usual if you're having a tough time with that. The opaline hard tier and the stone barb cracked tier. Uh, now, once he's dead, we're gonna go. If you look over here somewhere. Here, maybe. No, that's too far. Yeah, straight down there. So there's uh, this big tree root you can drop onto. Yeah, you can see it now. And you can make your way all the way down to that platform that's below. So you can see that little faint blue glow down there. It's a golem. Um, you can do the platforming. Well, first of all, let's just play this safe and... No, let's not. Let's not play it safe. Let's just go crazy. Fort Faroth is right up there if you want to rest and spend these runes. But what I would actually recommend doing here is dropping one of your talismans and throwing on a sacrificial twig. Alright, this is like the only time I'm like really planning on dying and uh, we have a ton of runes. Maybe you don't have as many for spending them, but that's fine. Just trust me when I say it, this is the way to do this. So, straight ahead, you see that giant jar right in front of me, right? We're going to aim for that. And instead of doing the platforming, we're going to take advantage of the lack of fall damage after you hit a spirit spring. So we're going to jump into this straight towards that pot. And then double jump to clear it. And then we can fall all the way down. Hopefully, if you clip a branch or something, it doesn't reset your fall cushion. I think they might have patched that, because I wrote in my notes that if you clip anything on the way down, you're absolutely screwed, but I hit that one pretty hard, I feel like. I didn't fully land on it, and if you do land on it, that's fine, because then you can just platform down like the second half, just the normal way, right? Um, which would still probably kill you if you messed it up, but you don't have as far to go. But that's the way I like to do it, is with the Spirit Spring. Now, this golem up ahead, literally, top three, like, worst enemies in the game, hands down. He has no weak spots on his ankles, and he has an insane amount of health. Absolute tank. And he also uses sorcery, which isn't really a problem. It's a pretty, it's like one sorcery thing that's pretty easy to counter, or dodge, or whatever. Um, but he also hits, like, a truck. So, and all he's guarding, he's just sleeping with a rune arc, like a teddy bear, basically. Now, if you're really good, what you can do is ignore the rune arc, because grabbing that will wake him up. And instead, just charge up a couple of, of charged heavies for his wrist. And if you time it right, I have been able to get him basically stuck in a stance break loop, where you go for the crit, and then you turn around and just keep hitting charged heavies on his wrist to just stagger him again. It's really hard to do, and if you mess it up, he's going to stand up, and then you won't be able to reach his wrists again, unless you bait out certain attacks and dodge them successfully and time it. It's just a huge nightmare. So, 
We're just gonna grab the rune arc and let him kill us. Because I don't feel like sitting here and fighting him for like five whole minutes. Because that's what it'll take. Look at that, I'm hitting him for like 900 damage. No, I'm, I actually can't read. 378, but still. His health bar is like not going down, dude. I just don't want to deal with it. So we, we get the sacrificial twig, so that's going to save our runes, and we can just go back up and not... I'm so stupid. I forgot the painting. Oh, I hate this guy so much, he just distracted me. Oh, you lose your rune arc with that? That sucks. That's fine, though. I have to go back. We're way back when we hit Celia Town of Sorcery. Whatever episode that was when we first cleared Kaled. Uh, we grabbed the red main painting. Alright, we landed on the roof. That's fine. That's not fine. Saved it. Painter is right here, so grab that before you grab the rune arc. Get the Ash of War Reign of Arrows, just because I think it's cool. That's what the painting looks like, see Redman Castle in the distance, all the ruins in front. Not quite the same in the rain, but that's alright. And then go to... Lens Rise, Lenny's Rise maybe, I don't know. Don't need to twig anymore because I will be not dying the rest of this playthrough. I'm gonna level up though and spend these runes. Not because I'm afraid of dying, for a completely different reason. Alright. Now just run down. Wait, no. I don't want to get mowed down by the boulders. Hit the spirit spring first. Honestly, going to Fort Faroth would have made way more sense. Doesn't really matter though, We'd, we would save like 15 seconds probably. From the Erd Tree, we're looking for this path down the hill to the west. Rest at the grace to reset those guys, and then we'll go back down this lower path. Ignoring the first bear. And then the second bear is staring right into the cave that we want. There's going to be a regular, like, big rune bear wandering around in here and if you can avoid aggroing it that would be more than ideal because this one is an absolute tank I um I, I distinctly recall finishing like an entire episode of Peaky Blinders while I was just swinging at this thing non-stop so once he goes in there loot these corpses this cave right there in front of us is the way to the boss. We'll go in here. Doesn't really patrol into this corner. So he should be okay over here. I didn't like that sound at all.
Why is he looking this way? All right. Maybe, maybe this is not the corner he doesn't go into. My bad. I'm not a bear expert, all right? We're going to go down here. This beautiful little oasis with some peaceful wildlife. My favorite kind. I hope he heard me. Get the bull goat's talisman. Honestly, no, you can't warp from here. Never mind. And, uh, yeah, it's over. We're just sending it. Cool. Now in here, drop down once, carefully a second time. And all the way down the bottom. There's gonna be a bunch of wolves around here. Beast blood. Stop that. Alright, now then for this boss. This thing is, uh, can be kind of a nightmare. I really, really do hate this boss. So, it's gonna be a couple of beast men, which doesn't really help because the last time we saw one of those was like in a cave in Limgrave. It's like one of the first bosses we ever fought. Absolute pushover. They're back with a vengeance. There's two of them. One of them has a cleaver and it hits very, very hard. And the other one has these like throwing, you like throw a shuriken at you basically. And they have very, very good tracking. So they do less damage than the cleaver, but they still definitely hurt. And um, they're going to hit you. So before you run in for the free backstab here, because the first guy's gonna have his back turned, just be aware that the throwing knife one will try to retreat to get to range as soon as it gets up. And, uh, the cleaver one, who will be behind you now, who hits very hard, is not something you should ignore. So just have an escape plan after that initial backstab. Summoning is obviously going to make the fight significantly less annoying because they'll split them up, but that is not a luxury that I can afford. But go for the throwing knife, guys, as quickly as possible. But there's no harm softening that guy up first. You basically have to roll through the throwing knives because they track so well. as he misses two point blank. I guess sprinting does work if you're far enough away like that and get the right angle. It's just, considering how much damage they do and how much they stagger you, it's just not worth risking, I guess. Brother, stop. This is not fun. And this guy's melee combo just drive him forward so much that he just he just never stops. But once it's down to one v one, jump attack city, put him back in his place. And down they go. Now they get you the Flame Drake Talisman plus two. And now we can warp to. Alright, so west of here, there's gonna be several lesser dragons scattered around. They have a nearly identical moveset like melee-wise to most of the dragon bosses we faced, 
but they're much smaller, which means the usual struggle of trying to reach the dragon, especially their head for stance breaks, is not much of an issue. So, killing them is not too bad, as long as you can take them one at a time. And this is... you've seen this move before. Get the classic stagger, hit him in the face. Same old song and dance, right? Now in the pond, further ahead here, uh, are a few more of them just hanging out. But, they're guarding a gravel stone, a golden rune five, a few slivers of meat. Not much to write home about, so I'm not going to waste my time on them in this video, but just know that they are there. But once you're in this area, that's the pond right up ahead, we're going to go to Celia Evergale next, which you can see on the map over here. Just drop a beacon, why not? Start making your way over here. If you need to rest up, go to Dragon Barrel West and then just kind of make your way around this canyon you can sort of see here. I've been spotted it seems. Uh, now, okay, over here, down the hill a little bit to the west, where this tree is, there is one of these glowing statues. Now, if you want to break it, there is a dragon way up the hill, directly east, that you can lead down here, and he'll pretty much despawn the second he steps on the statue, because you have to drag him so far away to get here. And then, there's also a much closer dragon, just to the southeast, right over this wall here. Um, but since he won't despawn because he's so close, you'll actually have to fight him after the statue gets broken. Counter offer though, just don't break it. It's It has three spinning stone fives in it. So I don't know why it's even here. I guess an argument could be made that this is technically supposed to be part of regular Kaelid, not Dragon Barrow, since we're getting close to that Celia area. But unless I'm missing something, you definitely get to it through Dragon Barrow. And there's no way to break it other than quite literally bringing a dragon over there. So, I don't know. This whole region's just kind of weird. But, hop in the Everjail for something that's not even slightly challenging, which is a welcome surprise in this episode. Battle Mage Hughes. That's probably not how you say his name, but that's alright. Yeah, this guy's pretty much exactly like... The other, like, two guys we see in the game dressed like this. Stay in melee range, he pretty much swings with his club. Does the, uh... Gavel of Hyma sorcery, the big blue hammer, or headbutts you. All of which, pretty easy to dodge and very punishable with backstabs. But he drops his ashes once he dies. Which, after that performance... Not really interested in using them. I, I don't feel like he would help me very much. With that out of the way, warp to the Divine Tower of Kaelid. Finally clear this out. Time for another level, don't mind if I do. Probably take my Vigor to 60 and then... I don't know, either... Keep leveling up Endurance or Dexterity. We'll see, we'll see where the wind takes me. Guy off to the left. Well, I was hoping wouldn't do that to me. My god. We're just- my vibe is killed. I'm just resting. Alright, that's not- that's not how that was supposed to go at all. That's better. Also better. This is not openable from that side. Drop down this bridge. Follow this ledge over here. Drop down onto this bridge, which will collapse. This is one of those things, man. Tell me that fall wouldn't have killed us if we were on torrent in a random place outside. 
I hate the inconsistency. But from here, go on this thin section, carefully drop down. And then you want to drop down. You have to make a little bit of a jump on this little octagon thing. And then jump to this ledge. And then we'll jump to this ledge too. Now the next place we're going is that ledge and then down to the one below. So as insurance, just in case you miss this one, I like to jump at this angle just in case we miss it because then you just kind of fall onto the next place we're going anyway. And then there's nothing off to the right, so we go left. Might be worth trying to take this guy out from range to be safe, honestly, but it's alright. Once he's dead, go up the elevator cage. Yeah, if you were to circle all the way around to the right on that central pillar, you would find absolutely no loot. So this tower is actually kind of a cool metaphor for life and how you only get rewarded for putting in the absolute bare minimum effort. Thankfully, that's the end of the platforming we have to do. I guess there's technically one more fall, but no more actual jumps to make. That went really smoothly for me, which was nice. Didn't die 95 times. At the top, we got that door that was locked earlier. Shortcut back to the grace, and then take the ladder back down. And we'll probably have a friend in this hallway waiting for us. Guess not. What if I hide around this corner and you don't see me? Okay. Black Flame Monk, though, same as the one we fought in Volcano Manor. Right outside the Godskin Noble fight. Take him down. He was guarding a rune arc. And then this bridge is the one that collapsed earlier, so dropping down there would get us back to where we were before, so that's not very helpful. So we go around the edge and drop down onto this bridge, which also collapses. For some reason that scientists simply cannot explain, we take no fall damage from this. And then we go down the next elevator. Might as well cook up some sleeping pots while we're waiting. I still have some. I have one. I will make two more. That seems fair. Grab the grace. There's gonna be one more black flame monk just beyond this, uh... Or, well, down these stairs. And then behind him is the boss door. I'm just gonna ignore him, honestly. But this is another Godskin Apostle fight. Virtually identical to the one in Windmill Village we fought before. This one's quite a bit harder from a, a numbers perspective, I suppose, but... Similar to any other Godskin, we're gonna miss our sleep pots. Because they make the fight too easy. Oh my god. I'm genuinely so upset right now. Fine. Not fine. I will not be intimidated. I'm thinking more endurance. I feel like I'm kind of struggling right now. Mostly because I spam jumping attacks like nobody's business and that costs a lot. You can also summon the Dolores Sleeping Arrow Puppet. Helps the sleep build up. Alright buddy, when are you going down? Right now, that works for me. Going to phase two. Perfectly timed.
Big tornado, get away. And put him out of his misery. Get the whole Godskin Apostle set, and back here in this chest, probably my favorite weapon in the game. It's obviously close with the regular, regular old Guts Greatsword, but I love this thing. It's so cool. God Slayer's Greatsword, another legendary weapon that doesn't count for the legendary achievement for some reason, but is what it is. We're going to take this portal this time, because it spits us out at a convenient location. And just go straight down this hill. There's an arteria leaf I just rode past if you want it. So it's safe to drop down. And loot these guys for Runark, Somber Spinning Stone 9, Dragon Wound Grease, and an Arteria Leaf. And then over to Isolated Merchant Shack. This is going to be the final encounter we have with the Bell Bearing Hunter. Uh, so... That means I'm going to level up again. Now sticking to the main theme of Dragon Barrow, it's going to be exactly like every other encounter with the Bell Bearing Hunter, except he hits harder and has more health. Super exciting twist. And you can hear a teardrop scarab over there too, which is... it might get scared away during the fight. Check afterwards if it's not there. We'll rest and he'll be there. But I'm gonna shake things up and do... the exact thing I've done with every single other one of these guys. And that is stand behind him after every attack. Try to bait out that shield slam. And hopefully keep him locked in that animation. If someone has enough health, we might actually be able to stagger him before he dies. Let's go. Make sure you get the crit in the front, not the back. If you do it in the back, I'm pretty sure it just does normal backstab damage which is less than a crit from the front. Get the Gravity Stone Peddler's Bell Bearing. And you're still here. Ash of War Sky Shot. We will be down there to deal with the Great Jar soon. Don't you worry. Uh, now... Getting to this next spot's a little weird. We're gonna warp down to Smoldering Wall here, right in the middle of Caleb. And from here, mount up Torrent, and we head east. Actually, the merchant we were just at sells the Beast Repellent Torch, which I pointed out when we first got here earlier in the walkthrough, but if you don't have it, you could pick it up. Um, if you want it, of course, not necessary. This is actually a great spot for it, though. We just run, running through these dogs. It'll keep them off your back. Down by that tree is a abductor. But if you run up these rocks to the left and then just drop down onto this branch, they usually don't aggro. And then we cross the branch to get to the abandoned cave. It's gonna be a nice time to make preparations for this cave right now. I actually really like this place. It's a Scarlet Rot cesspool, which isn't awesome, but it looks really cool and it's a rare case of a unique and interesting cave in Elden Ring, and I'll take that. But you could equip boluses if you want, on top of all the uh, environmental Scarlet Rot threats, enemies here also inflict poison, so you'd want preserving and neutralizing boluses if you went that route. Otherwise, classic move, you know what I'm gonna say. Flame Cleanse Me Incantation, the GOAT. 
Uh, to give yourself a bit more breathing room, pun intended, I guess, since this is a super claustrophobic area full of toxic fumes, you can swap out one of your talismans for the immunizing horn charm plus one. It's going to give you a ton of extra immunity. You can also throw on the mushroom set if you want for even more. Any immunity ge boosting gear you want, honestly. Um, but... That'll be more than enough to get through this cave, no problem. And we're gonna go through... I don't know, you could throw on Quick Step Dagger if you really want. It's really, like, deep Scarlet Rot here we gotta go through, but... You can also just... Do the old Back Step trick, or just roll. Just absolutely brute force it mindlessly like I am right now. These are the same geysers that we dealt with when we fought Commander O'Neill, I believe it was. There's a Nile and an O'Neill. I think it's O'Neill that's down in the Scarlet Swamp. But a little like gas that persists afterwards still hurts you, so be careful of that. And head over here. And that's the worst of it, honestly. It should be smooth sailing from here on out. Got one enemy over here, so I'm gonna take out him first. And we'll go grab the item. Serpent bow. And down the tunnel. Rat in here. Another kindred of rot. Couple more rats. Some fire grease. And the next room is uh, an island surrounded by a moat of rot. There's a giant Miranda flower in the middle who will spawn a bunch of smaller flowers when you get close. So instead of going for them, we're going to run over here to the right and deal with these kindred of rots up top because they actually have ranged attacks. Which could be quite a problem for us. And uh, yeah, we're probably getting Scarlet Rot down here. It's all right. We just we just send it. All right, dude. Forgot about the small ones, I'm going to be honest. Cool, once they're all dead, grab all the Aeonian butterflies. And then over here, you can climb up this pile of dead abductors. Get the Venomous Fang up there. And then behind where these two enemies were... ...is a cave, which will lead us to the boss. So this is a pair of Clean Rot Knights. Can't remember. Yeah, there's a fog, okay. I was afraid I was just gonna walk into the room around the corner. Um, so yeah. One has a spear, one has a sickle. As always, summoning, useful, split them up. You've heard me say it a million times by now. The spear one will be out in the open to start, and very quickly after the fight starts, the second one will just emerge from a pool of rot. Very weak to fire, both of them are. And they can be backstabbed. So use those two things to your advantage to try to hurt the first one as much as possible before the second one joins. That being said, the sickle one has an ability where it spins its weapon in front of it and then slams it on the ground, which will buff both of the knights which gives them a passive health regen and significantly reduces the fire damage they take. So interrupt that if possible. If you don't get the spear one very close to death before the sickle one joins, it might be worth just focusing the sickle knight to make sure it does not cast that buff because it's super annoying. Not to mention it likes to spam those uh, discs of light from range. Some people like to rush this place super early for the item that they drop, but at this point in the game, they should be pretty easy. That's going to do Scarlet Rot, the charge and grab. Didn't really charge that, so that one might not have, but... 
yeah, like I was saying, they're kind of tuned to be done super early if you want to. Still a pain early in the game for sure, but like, I feel like these have less health than just regular clean rot knights. You get the gold scarab, which boosts rune acquisition by 20% and stacks with the gold pickled foul foot. Really nice if you're trying to farm some runes. And then, whenever you're ready, let's warp to Deep Shifra Well. Just the name of the grace by the exit in Dragon Bear. We're not going underground, which is a relief. I am quite over the underground stuff. Uh, before we go that way, run south first. You can fight this bear if you want, but you know how it is with these guys. And this one looks especially feral for some reason. Grab the stone sword key. Oh, you got some air. I'm stuck. I'm stuck, oh my god. My life is over. We're so back. Yeah, that move, it's a little... It's a little dangerous. I'd be lying if I said that that's never gone wrong. <laughs> One little nudge and you fall off the, the cliff and die too, so... Yeah. Anyway, back at the Grace, we run west. And don't stop, because there's going to be a couple of, uh, well, more than a couple exploding rocks. And also a couple of golem archers. Now you can kill these guys very easily at this point. I just feel like they're tuned more to, like, early Kaelid difficulty. A bunch of gravel stones here if you want as well. But we're gonna leave them alive, and I'll explain why in just a second. Grab the spiked palisade shield underneath him from that corpse. Use his branches cover. And then hug the wall to the right so we don't get shot in the back. You can use this branches cover too. And then we're gonna run all the way up to the jar. save and quit to reset the golems. Uh, and then before you reload, we're about to fight some NPC invaders that are based off of real players, so you can reload in offline mode if you want an easier or, well, at least more predictable fights. You definitely don't um, need to go offline if you don't want to, but you will fight probably some it, it's completely random actually I can't even say probably but um, talk to the great jar here real quick so here probably my third favorite quote in the game incredible stuff and uh, the game will inform you that you can now see the red summon signs of the Great Jar's Knights. So, much like Fia's Champions, these are going to be based off of real players' builds who have completed this specific challenge. The important difference is exactly that. Unlike Fia's Champions, who are based off of players that hugged Fia, something most people do very, very early in the game, these are fairly tough, and you're more likely to go against some more well-rounded builds, because you have to be fairly strong compared to, to uh, the, the Fia's Champions boss fight, at least, I would say. And uh, to to kill all three of these guys, to finish this trial. So, probably going to deal with some strong, more meta weapons. That might be a headache, but it's up to you however you want to play this. You can, of course, though, get around that by playing offline, like I just said. And if you're offline, you'll have the exact same set of three to deal with. You got a mage over here with a thrusting sword... The S-Dock, it looks like, and the... Is that... It doesn't matter, but I have to know. Albanaric Staff, it looks like? Definitely doesn't matter. Uh, middle one's like a Dexterity build. You got the 
Misericord and a Buckler. Keep in mind that the Buckler can parry you easily. And it's an AI, so it can parry you whenever it wants. And that dagger has, like, I'm pretty sure the highest critical rating in the game. So, when they hit that follow-up crit after the parry, probably one-shotting you no matter how much vigor you have. I'm not gonna lie. That is going to hurt a lot. And then finally, you have a strength guy with the Great Mace infused with a holy skill and the uh, Banished Knight's shield here. So... You only have to fight one at a time, but you do have to kill all three in a single life to get the reward. You can retry whenever you want, but you do have to run from that grace through the golems again, which is kind of annoying. Speaking of the golems though, we left them alive because after you fight one of the knights, anyone you want, you can go kill a golem to get some flasks back before you challenge the next one. That being said, we're not going to have to do that. Now, I did not come up with the strategy, but I saw someone do this and it made me so happy. You can take an absolutely classic play out of the Dark Souls 1 Dark Root Forest PvP Covenant playbook. And when I say classic, I mean classic. This maneuver goes all the way back to 2011. After you summon one of them, a boundary is going to be drawn here. This big wall. I was going to say invisible, but it's very much invisible. This wall gets formed. You can't go through it. If you come over here carefully, and just crouch right here on this ledge. It's a little, uh, it, you know, it, it takes a second for the NPC to figure out how to get over this rock usually. But they'll pretty much just throw themselves off this ledge most of the time. This one has a thrusting sword, so it just cannot hit us no matter how hard it tries. And eventually she'll try to get closer. Just give it a second, and goodbye. One down, two to go. Same thing with uh, the one that has a dagger. It's not... Not a, a weapon that you can very easily hit the ground with. She has a little poison ash of war on it, which could be a problem, I suppose, but... I think that'll go over our head, too. If you are going to fight them normally, hit this one with Ashes of War and jumping attacks only, because like I said, if she parries you, it's over. You're cooked. No coming back from that. They're not very bright. Maybe wiggle around, help them out. Hop up your head like whack-a-mole. Entice them. The second that they, like, figure out that there's a rock there, though, they just jump up and rush you, so it's like... Just be patient. Just sit here and, and wait for them. I want to hop up and force it so badly for the video. See? See how quickly she just turns there? It comes out of nowhere. Goodbye. Two out of three. Now, the last one, personally, I think is by far the easiest to fight. There's not really as much risk of getting one shot as that second one. And you don't have to deal with spells and, like, thrusting sword spam. Since he has a mace, you can just imagine, like, the overhead, like, slams and everything. It's a lot easier for him to hit you on that spot. And his Ash of War can kind of knock you back as well. So, I don't like to mess with him on the cliff. I like to fight this one head on. The other two, like you saw, though, are just hopeless. They cannot hit you. See that swing right there? If he does that, just hits us right on the head. Slightest little nudge is sending us off that cliff. And I don't want to run through the golems again. So, once they're all dead... Talk to the Great Jar again. And we get the Great Jar's arsenal. After another riveting piece of dialogue, which I would probably say is my second favorite quote in the game. But my first favorite quote in the game has to be what he says after he gives you the reward. Life changing. And then behind him is a Colosseum, which is... I guess the second one we've encountered. The other one's in Lanedale. Do 
This one's kind of the ultimate Colosseum. It's got the, um... If you recall, I, it's been a long time since I explained this, but each Colosseum is slightly different. They have different game modes and, I guess, different rules if you want to look at it like that. But the this one features all three game modes available, Dual, Combat, Ordeal, and United Combat. And you can use Spirit Ashes at this one. So this is here for all your PvP needs in the future. The last one's going to be in Landell, but it's not... It's not like that one, I don't think. It doesn't, I don't believe it has all three game modes. Um, and then also, I want to point out that talisman we just got, because it's actually really good. Got the arsenal charm, and the arsenal charm plus one. And then the final tier of that, normally it'd be like a plus two, but this is Great Jar's arsenal, so they each, each of them increases your max equip load, but specifically, the arsenal charm increases it by 15%. This one is 17%, and the Great Jars Arsenal increases your equip load by 19%. So, pretty solid to have around. And then, finally, go to... Scar... St I say it wrong every time. Star Scourge Radon. I know what it is. I just suck at speaking. But, to wrap up our adventures here in Dragon Barrel, possibly the most commonly missed location in the game, because even if you do find it, chances are you probably decided it was too hard at the time and forgot to come back and do it later. We're gonna run all the way to the northmost point of this arena, right where the Wailing Dunes, the Dragon Barrel Cliffs, and the ocean meet. Way back here, extremely hidden. You war dead catacombs. So this place is kind of interesting because it's essentially just full of the spirits of dead knights. They're still fighting each other, which means if you want to, you don't really have to uh, fight most of the enemies. They're they're kind of distracted. Right down these stairs, you'll find pretty much the exact situation I just described. Now, they do kind of teleport all over the place, which makes them a little harder to pin down and stun lock compared to their solid, non-spirit counterparts. They don't like us much either, so don't hang around too much. Grab that stuff in the middle, hop up here. Archer's gonna spawn in, duck off to the left. Another archer. Off to the side again. Use the cover to kill this guy. Nice. All these guys can drop the... all the stuff that they would normally be able to drop if they were not spirits though, so... It's a nice place to farm the, uh, Queen Rod Knight set too if you would like to do that here. Or any of their sets, as I was just saying, I suppose. I'm kind of partial to the Clean Rod set though. forgot about you and that- wait, what did you just hit me with if your sword was in your scabbard? Did this get bitch slapped? 
not cool, dude. Uh, that night's just guarding a grave glove ward and maybe one of these grave violets. I'm not gonna mess with them. Not worth the headache. Up here, actually real fast, I throw on some crystal darts. This is a bunch of imps in here. It's our archer from earlier. Hop through here. I don't know if it saw me, but there is a clean rod knight in the next room past the imps. So don't uh don't hang out in there too long. If you're low on health, you could ignore that guy for a sec. Just make sure you come over here and pull the lever and then... If you gotta die, you can die. If you wanna drop back down to go back to the beginning of the dungeon right underneath us, you can do that too. But boss is now unlocked. And then, like I said, clean rot knight in here. And you can activate these dormant imps if you want some crystal darts. And none of them can get in here. I don't think. I'm fairly certain the Clean Rod Knight cannot teleport in here. I guess we'll find out. See if we can get the boys to soften her up a bit. Not me. They're just jumping off the edge for no reason. Run in here, get the Radon Soldier Ashes. And yeah, I'll just, I'll just let them do their thing, honestly. Now back down here in the southeast corner. Don't need any more darts. Lots of the guys from upstairs will have fallen down here, so this is gonna be a mess. Have Flame Cleanse me ready. Drop down and go in this back right corner for some silver pickled foul foots. Over here for a golden rune six. And then a chest in the middle. Collapsing stars. And then you can go back up top. And if you want to, rest up. If not, boss time. Alright, so, this is another putrid tree spirit, Scarlet Rot inducing variants of the ulcerated tree spirits that we first got acquainted with at the end of the Lake of Rot earlier in the series. For that reason, definitely recommend equipping Flame Cleanse Me or some boluses. Now, I really tried to make a cool strat work for this, where instead of stacking immunity to avoid the Scarlet Rot, we actually intentionally try to get infected by Rot, and we throw on the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation Talisman and the Mushroom Crown, which together would give us a 30% attack power buff for 20 seconds after getting afflicted with Rot, which is really cool. But unfortunately, there's no environmental Scarlet Rot in this area, so to actually get it to proc, you have to either let yourself get hit with the Grab Attack, stand next to the boss when it explodes, or stand in its fire, all of which hurt really, really bad, and will hurt even more when you get infected by Scarlet Rot at the end of it. So most of the time you actually do get hit with Rot in this fight, you either just get outright bursted to death by the combination of whatever was building it up and the damage you take when Scarlet Rot procs, or you're scrambling around with 1 HP to top off your health, cure the rot, and avoid the follow-up attacks for the boss, which eats up most of that, like, 20-second attack buff window. So sadly, it's probably best to just do this the old-fashioned way, avoiding Scarlet Rot, which is honestly pretty easy to do. And you honestly don't even really need any immunity gear. If you get grabbed, you're probably getting Scarlet Rot, but other than that, you'll probably be okay, I think. Spam some jumping attacks here and try to get a stagger. Beautiful. Going for the crit. Explosion. 
I missed time to roll horribly. All right, I need you to relax. Damn, dude. Come on, please. Not like this. Here comes the grab. We avoid it. We cleanse. Another grab. Just gotta fight off a pure instinct with these guys. Sound and vibrations. So the camera's doing us no favors. We kill him for the Red Main Knight Ogre Ashes, which... Is that... Is that the last one? Is that the, I think... No, we might need one more. I can't remember. But Legendary Ashes nonetheless, and a Golden Seed. And with that, we are done with Dragon Barrow. And we can finally, finally get to Landell and maybe finish this game soon. I'm gonna level up and I think we can get another flask? No. Wait, already at maximum? Really? Oh yeah, we are at maximum. 14 flasks. I didn't even notice that. Cool. And they're plus 10. So I didn't point that out when it happened, but there you go. Anyways, that's it for the video. Hope you uh, learned something and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.